G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I am adding to my ever popular cuddle series and today I'm adding a beautiful little cuddle koala. Lots and lots of requests for this one. So we're up to number five in this series and it is one of my favorite series. Perfect little doll to make as an heirloom doll to be kept forever. I have kept to the brief. I promised you I would keep them made out entirely of fabric so you can dive into your stash. Very cheap to make up, great for all sorts of on selling and so on. We'll talk a little bit more about that after the video. Um, but for now, we've got a free pattern for you and it is down in the description box below. You'll find that link. You can print out your free pattern templates and they're all free and print them out on your own home computer. Make sure you're using A4 size paper and also set your printer to be printing at actual size. If you have any printing issues, just talk to myself in the comments and we'll see if we can help you out with that, not a problem. Now remember that I keep, I have all of my seam allowances included in my patterns. Makes it so much easier for everybody, so you just have to cut on the line. So come on everybody, let's make this new character in this fabulous series. So let me show you what you're going to need to create this little koala cuddle doll. So we're going to start with our body pieces. Now they are made up completely in fabrics. I do a couple of felt accents on the face, but other than that, just your standard quilting cottons will work. I'm using a beautiful Australian wildflower print for the bottom. So I, the, the concept with this doll, because there's a series of them, is that the bottom half of them can be like a little romper. So it can, you can use up all of your bright prints and then you have the face, the head and the arms made in the animal's natural sort of a color. So I'm going for this lovely Australian wildlife print. And I have interfaced that fabric. Very important that you interface with a fusible woven interfacing. So it keeps everything flexible and it also keeps everything strong. So there's your two back pieces. The back pieces have the marks for your opening. The front pieces are cut exactly the same, only they don't have those marks. Now just a little tip for you all, making your cutting your pieces when you're making these dolls, Pay particular attention to your layout. This is your front center seam. So be very aware of where you're placing it if you're using a big print like this. And I've got a lovely spray happening out there. And be aware, I'm trying to put this delicately, be aware of what's going on here in this crotch section. <laughs> because sometimes prints can look quite odd when you mirror them and sew them together. So just keep that in mind. So we've got our front and back pieces there. We're also going to need little foot pads. They are felt. I think felt works best, but you can use fabric. Again, make sure that it's interfaced. I'm going with that koala gray. No tail on this one. Um, so one less thing for us to do. So let's then move on to the arms. So for the arms, you don't actually cut out your pattern pieces. You take your chosen fabric. So this is the fabric. It's a beautiful wool that I've chosen for the head and the arms. So I've put right sides together, just folded a piece together and you just trace around your arm shapes. It's all written there on your temp pattern templates. And then we're going to be sewing directly on the line of those arms. So you will need a heat erasable marker if you're working with lighter fabrics. So that's our arms done. Let's move on to the head. So for the head, we've got our two side head pieces. Now again, I'm using that beautiful houndstooth gray and white wool. Now let me give you another tip. If you're going to use a print as I am on the head of any of your dolls, the key things to remember are that you keep that print very small uh, a nice, tight, very uniform sort of a print. And it also works better to use a print if you are going to be isolating the facial features. And I'll show you what I mean there. But just keep in mind, keep the print small and keep it uh, nice and uniform, that the print's all sort of the same size. And again, these pieces have been interfaced and you've got a slash cut line in the head because thankfully, 
Because I make these dolls um, and my intention is that they are quick and easy to make, we're going to be putting the ears into the seam, which I know a lot of you will be grateful for. So speaking of ears, we've got those ready to go as well. And I'm cutting those, I've cut those just my two pairs of each in the same fabric, but they are not interface. Because they're going, they're going to be doubled and they're going to be going into that seam, I don't want too much bulk. But what I do want is some volume to those ears. So I have some fusible foam that's going to be in the middle of those ears, sandwiched between, and then we're going to have a beautiful ear that's lovely and soft and still cuddly, but it's going to hold itself out from the head. Um, now, if you don't have fusible foam, you can go ahead and use just some quilt wadding, fusible quilt wadding, or alternatively, just even just another layer of felt. So put you cut this piece out of felt with fusible webbing so that you can press it on and it's just going to give those ears some volume. So ears done, let's look at our facial features. So when I talked about isolating the facial features, um, that means we've got something behind the mouth, the nose and the eyes that's going to, that is plain, that's going to separate them from that head print, if you're understanding what I'm saying, I hope you do. So we have a front little muzzle piece that we're going to press on. So these are cut from felt with fusible webbing applied. They're going to give us that little front mouth muzzle section. We have the all important nose. The nose is cut from felt, again, fusible webbing applied. And then we have the two little eye surrounds. And I have cut those also from felt with fusible webbing applied. That gives it that absolute authentic little koala look. And then for eyes, you can, if you're making this for a very small child, you can use safety eyes. You'll just have to add them in a different way. I'll tell you as we go along. I'm going to be using my glass eyes. Any, any toy for a child over three will work just fine. Uh, I've got some nice deep topaz amber ones there, which are in keeping with koala. These are 10 millimeter. You could drop it down to a nine um, and it would work fine. And they're gonna stand out beautifully on that pink. So eyes there done. As far as embellishing your doll at the end, well, of course, we're gonna need um, some pearl thread for stitching in a mouth, very simple little mouth and a bit of stitching on the, around the eyes. We're gonna need, I use extra strong thread to sew those little eye detail pieces on in a nice pink color. You need your extra strong thread for some hand sewing. Of course, we need our neck joint. So the neck joint is a 45 millimeter neck joint, makes putting this doll together Super, super simple, need a little bit of clear craft glue and we're filling with polyester filling. Now talking about detailing these at the end, first of all, when you're making this one up, this is our little elephant in the same series. You can add buttons along the front center seam if you like. I'm not doing that this time um, because this time I'm making a little, couple of little felt gum leaves, gum nuts to hang from my little ruffle. So I will show you how to make those little felt leaves. It's just a super cute addition to our little koala. And I will be making the neck ruffle and I have a nice piece of fabric here ready to be able to do that, that works with my project. It's in the same story color as the other. And you can adorn them with anything that you like when it's done. So, but if you are going to be adding buttons, you need to do that when we're putting this one together. Now we're gonna move forward now and we're gonna start work on the body. And you're going to see me putting together this body, this elephant body. So you'll see me adding the buttons. They are all put together the same. The arms and the body is all put together the same on every one of these dolls. The only thing you won't be doing this time is adding a little tail. So go ahead and do that. I'll see you back here, ready to start working on the head. 
and I will have my body all made up. Now the body that we're about to make is the body that I use for all of the animal dolls in this series. So even though the colors may change um, throughout, all of the bodies put together in the same way, it just saves me having to film that section all over again each time and it will allow me to give you a whole lot more of a range in this little series. So just follow along, regardless of the animal that you're making, this is how you put that body together. The first step in creating the body, we're going to take our two back body pieces and where the opening marks are, we're going to sew a close zigzag stitch on the machine on the edge there, just to bind those edges. It stops it from fraying and when we go to close that opening, it's going to be nice and neat and tidy and it won't stretch. So our next step is to create a little tail. Now I've made a plait with my yarn, just a little braid and left some ends free at the end there. I've just tied a knot in the end and stitched across here. So this is the end we're gonna pop into the seam. Mine's about 13 centimeters overall. You can make it longer, shorter, whatever you like. So we're going to be sewing the center back seams of the both the front and the back body pieces. So these are our front body pieces that don't have any marks on them. So the center front seam are these ones here. So where your mark is at the back, your opening, these are the center back and center front seams. So in the, in the front pieces, we just put those right sides together and we're just going to stitch with a four millimeter seam allowance all the way down to the base there. And I do sew that two times because we're going to be adding stuffing. Do also make sure that the start and finish of all of your seams that you back and forth with a couple of stitches to secure it. So when we go to do our center back seam in exactly the same way, of course, we're not going to sew that opening. We're just going to sew from the neck edge down and back and forth and same here. But here is where our tail is going to go. So we're going to drop that in so that that's caught in between those layers in that seam as we go. And do make sure that you sew back and forth over that section so that it's held well and make sure that it is all still lined up as you do that. So four millimeter seam allowance. I have my uh, jeans needle in my machine and I do have my machine stitch length set to a number two so it's nice and small. You can now go ahead once you've sewn both those seams and press them open and flat. It gives you a much better finish in the end. So this is our front and our back. So at this stage, you can go ahead and put those right sides together again. And the seam we're going to sew next is that inner leg seam. It's just a very small little seam. And you want to make sure that you've lined up that center point. So perhaps pop a clip in there or a pin and we're just going to stitch with that same four millimeter seam allowance from the base around. Make sure that you really make sure that that's really nice and secure. So that one two times that same four millimeter seam allowance. There you can see that center inside leg seam stitched and I've sewn it two times. It's nice and strong. And we don't clip that seam in dressmaking. You would probably clip that, clip that seam, but because in uh, soft sculpture, we keep our seams very, very small and so that we don't have to clip them because it would definitely compromise that seam. Um, once we add stuffing, we need it to stay together. So the next thing I've done before we put this one completely together, I've added my buttons for the front. I've popped my first one about five to six centimeters from that top neck edge because remember we've got pull in around that joint and you want to leave a little bit of room for a neck ruffle or perhaps a little scarf so I've got those two there so now we're going to put right sides together and we're going to sew up those side seams which of course they will match beautifully just popping my clips in there 
right the way down the side to the bottom of that leg and we will sew that four millimeter seam allowance two times just the same as before. So the final step in putting the body together is we're going to add the foot pads to the, the little base of the leg there. So we're going to put right sides together. It's just like pinning in just a teddy bear foot pad. You can start anywhere because it's a circle. So we're just going to take our pin and we're going to go through all of those layers, flip it over and catch a little bit on the other side. Push that pin head all the way down. This is the easiest way to pin in a foot pad. Start to follow that curve. Pin through both of those layers, flip it over and just take a little bit up on the underside. Pushing the pin head down just clamps it all into place. Just going to make my way all the way around. It'll fit in beautifully if you've kept to your four millimeter seam allowances. There we go, all pinned into place. My next step will be to take my needle with an extra strong thread on it and I'm just going to overcast that foot pad into place so that I can remove all of my pins. So I've now removed all of those pins and you see that little foot pad is, ta is tacked into place. I now take um, some extra strong thread, a single strand with a knot in the end and we're going to sew that foot pad into place using a stab back stitch. I'm going to put the link at the top of the screen there for you to my video that shows you how to sew this stitch but I will show you a couple of stitches here. So I'm coming in from the underneath with my needle and the first thing I'm going to do is just make two stitches one right on top of the other just so my start point is nice and secure and nice small stitches and so now you see how I'm holding that out flat I'm coming up from behind and just traveling along the length of one stitch and going back into my last exit hole. So again, I'm gonna come up from the underneath, traveling along a little way and back into the exit hole. Because it's extra strong thread, we're sewing it back and front. It's the strongest stitch of all for hand sewing in soft sculpture. So each time you just have to make sure you go back into that exit hole so that the stitch is fully linked. And you should be able to create a line that's just as accurate as you would on the machine. So you can see, I'm just gonna make my way right the way around that foot pad and then I will just repeat with the other side. You can go ahead and turn that one through once you've sewn those foot pads in and do take your time to roll out all of those seams, particularly around those feet. So we've got a lovely rounded finish. And that's our body. That's the way we put the body together on all of the animals in this series. Regardless of the tail that you pop in there, they're all put together in the same way. So now we're going to move ahead and make the arms. So the arms in this case, that's one that I've already made and I'm making it in the color that I'm using for the head. So we've looked like we've got a nice naked little arm and this is the romper. So very simple to do, just pop that one aside and bring this one in. So I've got my piece of fabric folded right sides together. I've pressed it nice and flat and I've traced around my template, arm template and I'm going to stitch exactly on that line all the way around. And I do reinforce the lower edge by sewing that section again. Leave that top edge open. Make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish. And then we'll come back to cut that one out. So now that is all stitched, I just need to cut that one out. So straight across the top there. And then I'm going to cut approximately just a four millimeter seam allowance right, right the way around the edge and again we don't notch or trim this seam we don't clip the curves because we're giving it a very small seam 
we're going to be stuffing this and we don't want to pop that seam open. So before I turn this one through, because I used a heat erasable pen, I can now take that to my iron and press that and it will remove those marks and then I'm going to turn that through. I've gone ahead and turned that arm through and now we're going to add our filling. Now, just like I have with this one, we pack the end of the arm really, really firm up to about the wrist and then soften off. You can see not much there and then nothing for about the top inch and a half because when we add it, we want the arm to sit nice and soft at the sides. If we fill it right up to the end, it'll stick out. So just go ahead and tuck that filling in that top edge there. In that opening. Easiest with forceps. Take that right down to the base there. Support the end there, but do pack that hand and wrist very firm. Continue up nice and firm and then soften it off and, and then nothing up until here. Once you get up to there, just bring those two edges together and just stay stitch on the machine across the top to hold that all together. Next, we need to go ahead and add those arms to our body at the top of the neck on each side. So you need to first of all make sure that your little hand is curving towards the front. And we're going to take this straight edge here and we're going to line it up with our center seam, sorry, our side seam here and make sure that it is just exactly halfway. So here's my side seam and we're just going to tack it to the top. I'm just using my extra strong thread just to hold that into place, line it up with the top exactly. And it must be right on that seam and centered so that little arms hang correctly at the side. So these tops of these arms will be pulled in when we put the neck bolt, when we put the head on and the arms will come out from that neck shoulder section. So it's a great way to add these simple little arms. So I've just got that exactly in place. Make sure it's very secure. Because the top edge here won't be seen, it'll be drawn in around that bolt. There we go. So as we pull that in around the bolt, that little arm will be caught up in that next section. So I'm going to do the same, make sure you line it up on the other side seam exactly in half and stitch the other one into place. My next step is that we sew a doubled strand of extra strong thread, a running stitch just four millimetres in from the edge, starting at the back, leave your tail ends hanging and so right around that top neck edge, including those arms. So now I've tied my first knot and I'm just going to pull on those thread ends and pull that in. So we want to leave just enough room for that bolt to pass through. So just a small opening there. Our disc is 45 millimeters, so it's going to cover all of that and then knot that off at least four times. Okay, so I'm back now and this is the same little body made up in those koala colours and you can see that's come up beautiful with those little wildflowers. So now we can get started on the head. So now let's get started on the head. Now before we start putting the head together, we need to make the ears because they're actually incorporated 
into a seam on the head. So this is our completed little ear. Got a lovely effect with that little bit of volume in it and a little bit of top stitching around the edge. So to achieve that, we're going to take, first of all, our two ear pieces. We've got wrong sides here and we're taking our fusible foam. You might have a piece of felt with your fusible webbing on the back or perhaps some fusible wadding. And you want to position that right in the center. You need enough room here because this is going to be inserted into the seam and just some room all the way around the outside edge. We're going to press that one into place with a hot iron and a protective cloth. Once you have that foam nicely fused into place, we're going to put right sides together and line everything up with those ears. And we're going to sew, leaving this edge straight edge open, we're going to sew a four millimeter seam allowance all the way around that ear, finishing off here. Do make sure that you back and forth on your start and finish because that's when we turn it through. You don't want those seams to pop open. You can overcast that first if you find that easier. I just find if I put a clip right here, um, it holds it well and keeps it all together. Do make sure though that it's all lined up. So I've gone ahead and turned that one through and I've just closed the opening with a zigzag stitch. You can just use a straight stitch. My fabric does fray away quite easily, so I used a zigzag. That's the part that's going to be incorporated into the seam. And then I've just sewn a top stitch around the whole edge of the ear and it's round about, it's about your classic quarter inch seam there. So those two are ready to go into the head. Let's get working on the head pieces now. So our first step on the side head pieces is we're going to take those little muzzle pieces remove the backing paper. And again, we're going to take this to our iron and we're going to press that into place. Now you can see it fits that front curve perfectly. Have a good look at how I've got that on there. And it's just gonna give us that little white section where we can add that nose and smile. Both of those pressed into place with a hot iron and protective cloth. So I have those pieces fused into place and you can see on this one that I've gone ahead and just sewn a very close satin stitch on the machine all around that edge. You can use the cream color or the gray like I've gone ahead and done. Um, it depends on the colors you're using. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with this one. So now we're gonna put right sides together and we're going to line up that front chin seam that center front seam from the nose to the neck edge. The nose here, right down to the neck edge. I do overcast mine first, just with my extra strong thread so that I get that front seam absolutely perfect. And you want to be making sure that you're matching up that area under the chin where the two white areas meet. Um, so that it all is a nice clean junction when you're done. So it's just a four millimeter seam allowance and I sew that seam two times. You can go ahead and remove your overcasting stitch once you've sewn that seam so that you can open out that seam nice and flat. It gives you a better front chin line. Then pop that through and you want to really roll out that seam. Really make sure that's turned out all the way down to the neck edge and you should have a nice curve. So next, we're going to go ahead and add, pop that one back through, going to add the ears to the side head pieces. We're going to do that. Obviously, this is the top part of your ear and we've got our opening here. You want to leave enough space here when we pop that ear in there needs to be enough space so that when we add the head gusset, you've got room for a seam. So it's just a little way from the top. I would say it's quarter of an inch. That'd be safest. And that's just going to slip in there, putting right sides together and sandwiching that ear in between. So it's just like sewing a dart, except for that ear is in the middle. You can see the room there I've got 
for sewing that head seam and I'm simply going to sew that. You might have to do a five millimeter seam allowance there. I'm going to hand sew that with an overcasting stitch first so it doesn't slip and then sew straight down and then verge off the edge as you go as you get down to this point here and do sew that one two times and then repeat with the opposite ear. So now you should have both ears in place in that side seam. You can see how I just stitched it in and ran off the edge there. Make sure, do check that you've caught all of that ear edge and then we're right. So now we're going to go ahead, turn that through and we're going to add our centre gusset. So we have our pins ready. Now we opened out that front seam by removing our tacking stitch. We're going to take our pin in the seam allowance, four millimetres right on that centre mark. And we're going to take our pin again at the four millimetre seam allowance and making sure we're coming straight through that centre seam to anchor that first point. And then we're going to start to line up the edges side by side. So keep your pins nice and close together for this because it does come down to quite a fine little point. So I've taken my pin through all of the layers I'm going across to the other side now. My pin goes through all the layers, flip it over and take up a little bit of fabric on the other side. Push your pin head all the way down to the fabric. That's what holds it. It's pinning in 3D. It's the easiest way to do this. We do the same thing with anything that's an awkward shape like this. Once you've got that front section pinned in, you'll find it's easy to go side to side so that you're getting it pinned in evenly. And keep pinning that. Still changing over from side to side. Once you've got it pinned in, this front section, you're right to continue all the way down one side and to the back of the neck here. Now, when you come to this part with the ear, you're gonna to have to hold the ear out of the way. Remember that little bit that we left for the seam? That's gonna allow us to do that little seam there. And you'll see if we push the seam backwards, it pushes our ears forward. If we push the seam backwards, it pushes the ears back. So we want them to come forward. So as you pin that in place, you want to push the seam backwards. This seam that's on the ear does make all the difference. So now I'm going to continue on lining that all the way down to the back of the neck and then I'm going to get the second one pinned in again, pushing that seam backwards. So there you go. That's how that little head should look all pinned into place. And I'm doing all of my work on the center head gusset. Remember that. Don't try and pin it from the side head pieces. All the pinning, your overcasting and your actual sewing is done working on the head gusset. So now I'm going to take my extra strong thread and I've got a very long thread and I'm just going to go ahead and overcast the whole head gusset into place, removing my pins as I go. That way we're going to get a beautifully balanced head. Nothing's going to slip when we take it to the machine, but we are going to hand sew in that very front part of the nose. But for now, I'm just going to continue on with my overcasting right the way around. Okay, so now all of my pins are out and this head gusset is nicely tacked into place. Now we're just going to sew by hand with a stab back stitch 
just the front nose section because you can't get this under the machine and keep it all accurate. So it's only the very front section we have to do. So I would say it's around about oh, four centimeters that we start down one side. It's not an exact measurement. And we're gonna come in from the underneath. Now I've got a single strand of extra strong thread with a knot in the end. And I'm just going to make one stitch. I've come in at my seam allowance of four millimeters and I'm going to just sew another stitch straight over the top of it. So this is a stab back stitch. It's the stitch we use to hand sew any areas or to hand sew our entire project if you like. It's for sewing seams and it is the strongest stitch of all because it's fully linked back and front. So now we've got our first two stitches in place. I'm bringing my needle up from the underneath just the length of one stitch in my four millimeter seam allowance, then I'm gonna take my needle back in to the last exit hole so that the stitches are linked together. Travel along a little way, keep your stitches nice and small and even, and back into that last exit hole. So I'm gonna put a link at the top of the page there for you to have a look at that video if you haven't, if you're not familiar with a stab back stitch and it will give you a, an up close clear video tutorial of that one. And you can see I'm just gonna continue on, make my way all the way around to about the same distance up on the other side. And make sure when you get to this front section here that you really anchor in a couple of stitches either side of that center mark so that nose sits really central because that's key to your ears being even as well. So just giving you a close up look at that stab back stitch down that front V section of the nose there. So now it's easy enough to tuck the rest of this under the machine. Remember, we're still working on the head gusset. So pop that seam under the machine. We're gonna stitch all the way down to the back of the head. When you go to do, do the other side, you'll reverse it and start at the back and go up to meet up with your stitching. Do sew those seams two times for extra strength and make sure you back and forth on your start and finish. I have gone ahead and turned that head through and take your time to go over every seam and roll it out between your thumb and fingers. It'll give you a more rounded finish. We do want a nice little rounded head, particularly on this front section here, really roll that out. And then we are going to start filling this head. Now, if you're using safety eyes, they need to be added um, before we stuff the head. But what you need to do is temporarily stuff the head to be able to get your eye placement right. And we are using the little eye detail patches as well. So what I recommend you do is watch, continue on watching the video until I have the face features put in place so that you can get a good idea of where they're going to go. Um, and then you can temporarily stuff the head, mark in your eye placement, unstuff the head, and then continue on, pop the eyes in, then continue on and do the nose after that. So I'm doing it in a different order. So. If you're using, um, you know, if you're not making it for a very young child and you're using just the buttons that you're adding afterwards or eyes like I'm putting in afterwards, you're all good to follow along here. So let's get this head filled. Now, very important that you really fill out this head absolutely firm and particularly across the bridge of the nose here, fill out these lovely forehead seams and really give him some nice wide cheeks. So use your felting needle as you go. This one actually feels really quite easily with your fingers and it's a good size to be able to tuck in there. Always start by filling the muzzle first and pack it in and then use your wool felting needle to pack it in as you go and get it super tight. Fill till just about a centimetre or so from the edge and use your felting needle to flatten it out. I'm gonna get it to that point and show you how that would look. 
here has that little head all filled out and now you should have quite a prominent little front section here at the muzzle um, because we're going to pull that in with a with a little smile thread so we need it to be a bit prominent so when we pull it in um, it ends up correct pro proportion so this section here make sure this section is all really filled out there's absolutely no give in that head at all now i can't stress enough there's no point me putting these lovely design shapes and curves in if you don't fill those uh, those heads out so now turn that one over and i've gone in there with my felting needle and i've packed all of that in it's nice and flat and it's ready to take that neck joint so I've taken a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I've sewn a running stitch all the way around the neck edge starting at the back and leaving the tail ends hanging so that we can tie it off and it's just about five millimeters in from the edge now we're going to take that neck disc and slip that in it should be a nice snug fit pop that in there you want to make sure it's absolutely central I've left my needle on because I like to go around the second time and make sure that it's absolutely secure. And I'm going to push down on that disc and pull on those threads, pull that in as tight as I can around that neck bolt, then knot that off at least four times. You might need someone to hold that knot for you. And then I will go around again with my needle and tie it off again just to be sure. Now our next step is to add that nose. So what we're going to do, I've just got that pinned into place at the top there. Of course, I've taken off my backing paper. That fusible webbing backing is just to give the felt more substance and to stop it from fraying away. It's not for actually fusing. So now you need to have a good look at the position of this because it's a key component to the little koala's face that nose sits quite low down so it's sort of just before the the most prominent part of the curve here where the center of that base of the nose sits because they have a very long looking forehead eyes are just going to sit in here and we're just going to take our pins and first of all anchor in top and bottom so you want to make sure that you're going straight through that center seam and then just I like to pin all the way around. And as you're doing that, give it a little bit of volume. So when you're pinning it, give it a little squeeze so that it's sitting up just a little. Don't be stretching it to its full capacity. I hope you understand what I mean. If I give that a little squeeze, you see how it's pulling up just a little in the center. So getting that all pinned into place right the way around. This is maybe the most challenging part of the project, but if you just follow the steps, you'll find it okay. Now there's two ways we could address this nose. And that is we could, with our pearl thread, we could long stitch across the whole top of that nose in place. I don't like to do that. I want to see that felt. So I sew a little blanket applique stitch all around the outer edge of that. Okay, nose nice and straight. So now I've got a single strand of my pearl thread. This is the eight ply, so it's the finer one. You can just use extra strong thread if you like. You just need a single strand. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start my stitching. I always start my stitching on the lower edge because this is where I want my stitching to be prettiest. Not that it won't all be pretty, but we do our best. So I'm going to just slip my needle in underneath, catching up some of the, the nose. And I'm just bringing my needle out right on the edge. There's a knot in the end that's going to be hidden under that template. And now I'm going to sew 
a blanket applique stitch. So I've now switched my needle to a curved needle. It does make the job a little bit easier in a lot of cases. So I've come out, the needle, the knot is hidden and I've come out just on the edge and done my first stitch. So now I take my curved needle and I'm just going to continue on. It really is about finding your right ang angles here to be able to dive in and bring that needle out through both layers because you need to be catching up some of that underneath layer and a curved needle certainly helps you do that. Pull that through, use your forceps if you have any issues with that. Pulling a stubborn, stubborn needle through and each time, oh you're really not cooperating little koala, thank you. Each time you need to be coming through that loop. Okay, second stitch and pull that one down tight. I made that look terribly awkward. It really isn't quite that awkward. So in again, take up both of that fabric, push that through and through that loop. Little koala behaving now and pulling that stitch down. So you're going to end up very hard to see on the black, but there's going to be a blanket applique stitch around the whole outer edge there of that nose. And there we go. So that has my blanket applique stitch all around that nose. As I said, it can be a bit challenging. I understand if it is. Perhaps you might want to go for stitching uh, straight over with a few stitches over that template. If you are going to do that with stitching it in place with your long stitches, with your doll needle coming in from behind with that pearl thread, then just lightly glue that template in place before you do so with your clear craft glue. So just another option for you, but do remember that this, the nose on a, uh, koala is it's really its most defining feature so take your time with it and it really is just about getting in a comfortable position so you've got all those angles but you can see I really do like that effect of that that little blanket applique all the way around it okay so now we're going to go ahead and add the mouth so the mouth is a simple little smile now I've added my pins either side because you can do that it allows you to test um, what that smile is going to look like. Drop your double thread in around it and you can get an idea of how that's going to look and we're going to pull that in nice and tight either side. You can see where I've got mine situated. It's probably just under a centimetre from that uh, most prominent point either side of the nose and just down a little. So I've got my largest doll needle threaded up with a double strand of uh, my pearl thread. This time I'm using five ply. I want it to be quite noticeable. And when we pull it in, we do lose a little bit of that color. So where I like to start is underneath the back. I want to hide the knot in underneath at the back of the head. So I'm going in through that actual neck joint there. That knot is going to hold. Then I'm going to take my needle through the same exit hole and I'm going to bring it out exactly on one of those marks there. Now I've made a little pen mark with a heat erasable marker just in case I get it wrong and I want to bring that needle out right exactly on that spot. If you've bothered to measure it then you want to bother to catch exactly that spot. So now when I pull on this it's anchored from right down the bottom here. And I'm going to pull on those threads, that knot will hold, and I'm going to pull across. I'm going to dive back in and come out again 
at the back of the head here, keeping that tension up. Take my needle in again and come out at the base where I can knot that off. So I'm gonna pop my needle in there. You do want to also make sure that those threads aren't twisted as you do that. So straight in there to my other spot. And I'm gonna go out low at the back of the head. Check that they're not twisted. Really tug on that. And pull that in. And I'm really, really going to pull that in. So we got a nice little koala smile. And you can also, before you cast off, get your needle in underneath there to really pull in that side and ease it across. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and sew a couple of anchoring stitches on the base there. So there we go, we've got that sweet little koala smile all nicely pulled in. So our next step is the eyes. So to position your eyes, you'll find that on your little eye detail, they look like little lemons. I've removed the backing paper from that felt. Now traditionally their eyes are a pinky sort of a colour around their eyes. We're just doing an animated version, so best to go with a pale pink. And I've got a, a mark in the centre of those that show you where to put your the very centre of your eye. And so when you're choosing your eye position, make sure that you choose it with those in place. So I've got my eye tester pins and I've popped those in place there. Now it's important that there's a nice slant to the eye, so that little lemon shape is going up. And also the eyes sit quite low on the face. So you can see exactly where they are there. So they're about a half a centimeter from your muzzle template there and just a little bit less than that either side of your seam line. There really is, there's a sweet little spot there where they sit. Remember, if you're adding the eyes at the end like I am, we're gonna get some really nice pull in there as well. Now, if you're adding safety eyes and you've watched up until here, you can now see where your eye position needs to be. So you can get those into place um, and then restuff your head, continue on with your other details. But for now, I'm going to add these eye patches. So the way that we do that is to take a little bit of craft glue because we are going to glue these in place. And I am going to take that one out and I'm just going to add a little bit of clear craft glue just around the hole that I've made with my awl, just to be able to secure that into place. Not too much, you don't want an extending beyond. We are going to be stitching these down, or not actually, you don't have to, but I think it's definitely a more prof professional finish if you do. So that's the best way to get it exactly in the right place. Again, make sure you've got that nice little tilt happening and then you can really push that in. Then do exactly the same with the other one and make sure that you've got it matched up on the other side. If you want to throw a couple of pins in there in each corner, you can do that. I'll get the other one into place. So those little eye details are nicely glued into place. Now I'm going to let that dry absolutely completely before I do my stitching. The stitching we're going to do is exactly the same as I did around the nose. Now, if that seems a little daunting, you can glue the eye template on more securely. So take it right to the edge, glue them in place, push it in with your eye tester pins or whatever you're using let it dry completely and then you can just add the eyes after that and adding the eyes is going to keep those in place. 
I do like this extra detailing around the eyes. I think it gives it a fantastic finish and it outlines that eye. Totally up to you. Um, but I'm going to get, let that dry and then I'm going to come back and do that stitching. So that glue under those eye pieces is nice and dry now and I've just gone ahead and so this time I'm using my extra strong thread in a nice slightly deeper pink shade and I've just started doing that same blanket applique so much easier to see it on these colours here and it's I find it very easy to sew these little eye patches on because they're such tiny stitches and you don't have to go in very far so and also remember that your um, if the head is firmly filled it holds itself out for you if you're trying to do this with a, a very softly filled head it's just not going to happen so you can see just coming through all those layers bringing my needle out through the loop and it's just giving that lovely little applique finish and it's going to go right around that edge. I'm going to do the same all the way around, then the same with the other eye. There we go, that stitching around those eyes is all done. Lovely little outlining effect there. So now we're going to add the eyes. So if you're adding them the way that I am, this is how we do it. We've done it many times together, but let's run through it again. So we're going to take a doubled strand of extra strong thread. We folded it in the middle. And then we're going to double it again and we've got four strands. This little loop here we're going to pass through the shank of our eye. You can use shank buttons for this too. Something to remember. I'm going to open out that loop and I'm going to take all four threads back through then I've got that eye nice and secure on four strands. Then we thread that onto our largest doll needle, which I've already done with the other eye here. And you need to make sure with your awl that you've really taken that in and created a nice passageway in for those eyes. Then we're going to take that needle and take it straight through following that little canal that we've made and come out right down low at the back of the head in the center. Pull that eye all the way through. Make sure that it's not twisted, that it's gone in. It's pulled in nice and snug. What I do like to do is tie a knot just in this side, it just helps me determine which bunch of four belongs to which eye when I'm pulling it in at the back because what we're going to do now is we're going to re-thread the other eye and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to come out the same hole. So I've just enlarged that hole a little bit with my awl. I'm not cutting any threads, I'm just parting the fibres. That's going to make it easier for your needle to find that hole. You'll find it's quite easy. I'm going to re-thread the other one. I'm going to take it through and straight out that hole. So I've got both of those eyes going straight through now. They both come out that same opening at the back. The reason why we come through that same hole is so that we're knotting it off, tying them off into the stuffing of the head, not the surface fabric. So I've tied one preliminary knot. Now use your thumbs pressing down, pull on each of those groups of four threads to get your tension right and get them pulled in the same. I do tend to over sync them because they'll always slacken off just a little. Keep the tension up, knot that off at least four times and then snip those thread ends. That knot will disappear into the head. And that completes our gorgeous little koala head. So let's get this beauty put together. Time to put this little one together. So we've got our beautiful head made and our body and we've already pulled in that neck section. Very simple. We're just going to go ahead and pop that bolt straight through that section there. Just flip him over and we're going to add our corresponding disc. 
and then our washer and our nut. And we're just going to finger tighten that at this stage because we want to make sure that we get all of the fabric pulled out. We don't want anything caught up in there. And you also want to make sure that those little arms are nicely pulled out as well, that they're sitting nicely down at the sides there. Check your front and back seams are right. Once you're happy with that, you can tighten that up. I like there to be a little bit of movement in that neck joint, but I will tighten that up. I tend to use my forceps. Tighten that until you can just move it. And again, check that everything's right, everything's coming out from the sides, nice and even as it should. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and just add one little drop of super glue right in there, right on the nut, so that that little nut will never come adrift. So with that head in place, we can now go ahead and fill that body. Now, I always start getting down there in those little feet right down below. You can use your forceps for this. It'll help you get that stuffing right down in there and really make sure those feet are filled out. The section to watch with this one is this crotch area here. You will, want, well you, you will naturally get a few little wrinkles here, but try and fill it out as much as you can. I pack mine very, very firm because you've got lovely floppy arms if you've done the right thing and made sure you don't have filling at the top of the arms so the arms sit nice and soft at the sides you can fill this body quite full it's still got some give and it can still be cuddly but it'll hold its lovely shape so make sure too that you get plenty of filling up around this neck joint to support that head and use your wool felting needle when you get to the end and pack all of that in right up close to the edge here and we'll come back and close that opening. There she is all filled out. I've decided she's a girl all of a sudden. I don't know why, but there you go. These things happen as you go along. Um, so now we're ready to sew up this back opening. I've taken my felting needle and I've gone in there and tucked all of that stuffing in so it's not coming out at me. And I now have a strand, a single strand of extra strong thread in a matching color. Always go for a darker color if you don't have the exact match. Big old pile of knots at the end. And we're going to be sewing this with a ladder stitch. So we're gonna take the needle and we're gonna come up underneath and bring my needle out at the seam allowance, which is four millimeters, right where that seam starts to open out. That knot's going to hold. I'm just going to spin her around. We're going to travel across, directly across, take our needle in again at the seam allowance, and then we're just going to travel down the length of one stitch. You do want to keep your stitches nice and small. And we're going to pull that one across. So we've got our first stitch going across. I might just bring that up a bit closer for you all. So one stitch going across and now we're going to go travel back across to where we started. We're going into that same hole that we started with. Dive in there and travel down the length of one stitch, the same as we did on the opposite side. This little koala has been <laughs> very unhelpful through this process, I must say. Grabbing with little arms and ears all my threads. There we go. Okay, now travel back across to the other side and each time we're going to go in to the last exit hole. That keeps the stitch completely linked. And it means that when we give it a, a squeeze and pull it in, it's bringing those edges together. So back across to the other side. I guess it's called a ladder stitch because it's sort of back and forth like that, creating a little ladder of stitches. Again, I'm giving it a squeeze each time to pull that in. And it is important that you do that as you go. It will slacken off again, but you need to pull it in 
every couple of stitches. If you travel all the way down and then you try and pull those stitches in together, it won't knit together well. So a little squeeze each time, tug on that thread and you're just going to continue all the way down until that opening is closed. I will put a link up the top there for you for a, a video that shows you exactly how to do this stitch really up close. Um, you might get a bit better look that way. I think most of you are familiar with this stitch now though. So just continue on until that's closed. So we've got our completed little koala. Now these dolls I've designed, they all look way, way better when they have a little neck adornment of some kind. I usually add a neck ruffle. I've got a little bandana that comes with the cuddle pup. You can pop a bandana on them. You may have some other ideas of what to do. You could put a little collar around them. My ruffle pattern that I've got here I'm going to put a link at the top of your screen there and it will give you the measurements to make this ruffle. It's from a uh, bunny doll from way, way back, but you can also follow that little section of the tutorial that shows you how to put this one together. It's very, very simple. It's just made with two different colours of your print fabric. I usually make one of them part of this story and the other one a contrasting colour. So I've pulled out the pink in the print here. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this one, gathering stitches all the way along and then we pull it up and it sits around the neck. So I haven't pulled that up yet because I want to add a couple of things to it. Now I did promise you at the beginning that I would show you how to make a couple of little simple leaves, little gum leaves and a couple of little gum nut flowers. So first of all, let's look at those flowers, super simple. I've just got a little connector ring there, just that I have a packet of them. They're always handy. Um, and I've taken some braided cord through that loop, then passed it through just a plain wooden bead. It needs to be fairly thick, the opening of that bead. Then I've made a knot and I've just opened out those fibres of that braided cord. It's given me two gorgeous little gum nut flowers that will work really well. Then for the leaves, I've given you two templates here. What you need to do is make up some double felt. Now double felt is just two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. Join those pieces together enough to accommodate your two leaf pieces. And I make it two different colours because I'm going to have one leaf showing one colour and one leaf showing the other colour. Um, and it's just, it breaks it up and it gives, you see a little bit of colour each side. Now the best way to do this is to do what I've done right here and I have traced around those two pieces using a heat erasable pen and then I've just drawn in very simply, I've just drawn in some vein lines. So those little V sections and a line down the middle, curve that in, give it some interest and then you take that to your machine and you just stitch in the vein lines. Just ignore the outer edge. We're just stitching in the vein lines with a contrasting colour. I'm going to use a nice vibrant um, sort of a mustard yellow. It's really going to show up on both of those colours. So I'll just stitch along and I will sew over those lines two times. So I travel along, come out back and across, continue on, back and across on my machine and then I go all the way back up. I'll do the same with both of them and then I'm going to cut those pieces out on that line. Then I can take it to my iron and remove all of those marks that I made. There you go. So you can see I've got my two completed leaves. You see how nice it looks having the two different colours there. Another thing that you can do once you've cut them out is gum leaves tend to have little chomps taken out of them. So you can do a couple of little nicks here and there along particularly just that lower edge. Keep it nice and random. And it just adds just a little bit of interest and breaks up that edge.
just a really great effect. Same with the other one. Just a couple of little pieces and then we've got our two leaves. Now what I'll do, so your, the way that you add it to yours may be different to mine depending on how you've got those little flowers organised. But I will actually open up these rings and I will add them to the centre of my gathering. So that when I pull all of this in, this is going to be in the middle. And I'll also just take a couple of stitches first and stitch the leaves in place as well where I want them. Once I gather this all up, this is going to be sitting in the centre and will go around the neck beautifully. I'm going to get that all organised, pop it on our little koala and show you that result. And there she is, all complete. Now I think you'll agree that little gum leaf and the little gum nut tie around her neck is absolutely gorgeous. So do give that a go. Try and choose some lovely floral fabrics or make her absolutely funky. You could make her in a pop, -up, pop art style. Um, and certainly if you've made all of the others, you've got to make Little Miss Koala. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I think she's my favourite so far, but I always say that with the most recent one. Onward and upward um, to the next one. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so I'm attempting to hold the whole crew. So the whole five. I'm not going to be able to do this with the next edition, am I? Never mind. No, maybe number six because I have six children. I should be able to hold six. We'll see how we go. I'm looking forward to the next one already. Um, I have a few in mind. You can always comment uh, below and give me some thoughts on what you would like to see in this series. Speaking of this series, it has been brought to my attention um, just this week by some of you lovely people out there letting me know on our Facebook page there are a couple of companies who are actually stealing these designs and selling them, selling the pattern and cheekily enough, selling my this video tutorial. Very frustrating. Um, there's not a lot that we can do about it aside from send a stern email, which I've done. It's definitely not the first time it's happened in my career. I appreciate your concern, everybody. Um, my attitude towards it has always been, I'm not concerned that they make some money. I'm concerned that they are robbing people of the opportunity to get these patterns for free. Um, so the only way we can combat, combat that is to keep spreading the word about Pay It Forward in this channel. Let's get it out there. This particular series is very dear to me. I really thought that it's a great series for anyone wanting even to start your own little cottage industry. So let me be very clear. You are quite welcome to sell anything you make, any product you make with my patterns. You can on sell them. You just cannot sell the pattern itself and you obviously can't name yourself as the designer. Now saying that, I don't need you to name me as the designer because if you do the work and make the product, you should get the praise. So I just need that you make, enjoy them, sell them online, sell them through any avenue you like. If that helps your family, if it helps your situation, that's exactly why I have this channel. So they're very cheap to make. They use very simple, using just fabrics. So many of my fabrics are upcycled. Many of my fabrics are thrifted. So remember that you can check out your thrift stores, pick up some amazing fabrics and that makes them really unique. Now on the subject of starting your own little cottage industry with these, by all means, talk to me via Instagram. Come and chat to me on Instagram if that's something you're thinking about doing because I have a whole lot of information and ideas that I can give you all about really making this series a very cohesive, very marketable series. So come and talk to me there. Um, you've got that address across the screen. I would show you, but my hands are full, um, but that's there for you. Come and talk to me there. Come and talk to me there just to chat. I'd love to hear from you all. Thank you for welcoming my beautiful ducky, my Airedale pattern in masterclass. I'm glad you like him. 
If you want to join Masterclass, if you want to step up, by all means, uh, come and join us. The link is down below as well. Also the link to our Facebook page where you can show off your beautiful creations. Please share them with me, share them with all of us, and I will on-share them um, in my Instagram. So looking forward to the new little koalas coming up, looking for some really original work. Thank you so much for all your support, everybody. I appreciate every single one of you. Everybody have a great creative week. Stay safe most of all. And remember, keep on paying the good things forward. Until next time, it's Huru from me.